You're watching Good Morning Washington on News Channel 8. Well, it is Stroke Awareness Day, and this Thursday, when we come back, we'll talk to a doctor about stroke prevention and a member of the GMW family that is a stroke survivor. Then we're taking you out to see the Georgetown University Hospital. Um, you know, doctor, first things first, um, what's the number one message that you want to get out to people as part of Stroke Awareness Day? You know, our um, technologies and our treatments for strokes have gotten dramatically better in the last couple of years, but there's a very narrow time window for treatment, so patients and people have to know to get to the hospital as soon as possible. People, I think, uh, may associate strokes with older people, but it's not the case at all. What are the symptoms right away that, that should tell you you're having a stroke? You're exactly right. Strokes can happen to anyone at any time and they're a medical emergency. The American Heart Association has worked on developing a program called FAST, which stands for uh, facial droop, arm weakness, slurred speech, and time to call 911. Okay, okay. Um, what is the time frame as soon as you realize what's happening what should you do next? Obviously call 911, but what kind of time frame we're working with? Yeah, so, so like I said, our treatments have gotten dramatically better. We have um, clot-busting medicine you can give in an IV. We have catheters that can go inside the blood, blood vessel and pull out clots from the brain. But there's a very narrow time window, and so really as soon as possible, patients have to get to the ER because in that situation, time is brain. Yeah, I've heard um, if you have a, you know, some kind of a heart attack, something take you know, aspirin. Is right. there something you can take right there that you, it's, it's close where you're waiting on the paramedics to get to your body? You know, I, I really think you need to just get to the emergency room as soon as possible and then we can evaluate you there. Okay. Well, a member of our team actually is a stroke survivor, Julie Wright. And yeah, what, can you, How are you? what can you Fine, tell us you. Uh, about your experience? It was a scary experience. I actually was at the gym when it happened and I was uh, starting to warm up on the treadmill. I thought my sugar was dropping. So I, I kind of got the shakes and then they ran out not knowing what to do for someone sure. with a stroke. My friends actually ran out to get Gatorade and a crunch bar to like feed me, which is the last thing you want to do because you, I had the partial paralysis down the left side of my face. So they're trying to feed me, mm -hmm. thinking it was my sugar and obviously it wasn't. So it was a very scary experience. And then trying to keep me awake because you know, you're like losing consciousness a little bit. Mm -hmm. sure. So very scary. Uh, yeah, there are all kinds of signs and symptoms of strokes, but one of the big things that we're trying to promote is really public education and mm -hmm. awareness because the more people know and the more that people can have a balanced, healthy diet and regular exercise, right. um, the better they'll be. That was yeah. kind of my, my final question, but 40 seconds left here. What are some things you can do as a precaution? Obviously, your diet and exercise sure. is important. So clots that go to the brain and cause strokes can come from different parts of the body. They can come from the heart, they can come from the neck or the brain themselves. So I think the important thing is to address the risk factors that cause clots. So things like high blood pressure, aggressive management of diabetes, and cholesterol are very important. Mine was genetics. Not to interrupt you, but mine was genetics. Absolutely, uh, we genetics have like a little funky role. blood in our family, so a thick, you know, thick blood, and it caused me to clot. And mine went through the hole in my heart. Wow. Absolutely. So, so it's different in different people, mm -hmm. and so you, what you want to do is address the specific risk factors, but in general, I do recommend, like you said, a balanced diet, regular exercise, yeah. and for people that smoke, I would strongly recommend they quit. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Dr. Stemmer, thank you so much for joining thank us. Thank you for having and, uh, me. Julie, thanks for sharing your story as well. Sure. Uh, we appreciate that. Uh, it is 947 right now. Uh, here